to the extent that the move in Bitcoin's price has been a function or at least correlated with the situation at Facebook and the, the launch of this Libra currency and this sort of larger idea that billions of people are going to get an electronic wallet through Libra and therefore they neither get interested in crypto, et cetera. If, if lawmakers are trying to say, or at least pre, uh, uh, push the pause button on all this, should it, shouldn't Bitcoin drop like a rock? Yeah, I, I don't think we're, we're seeing that. I mean, I, I think there's a couple of critical things. I mean, one, which is, you know, crypto has been on a, a sort of rise for 10 years. And uh, it's sort of the blockchains that power the different major cryptocurrencies continue to grow. We're going from tens of millions to hundreds of millions of users. I think the excitement around Libra is obviously, do we go from you know, tens or hundreds of millions of users to billions of users? And what is that going to mean? Uh, as people become you know, more aware of crypto, they may say, well, I don't necessarily want a centralized coin uh, from a kind of consortium that's backed by Facebook. Maybe I want something that's more open and, and free to use on the internet like Bitcoin. And so it's driving awareness and driving interest. Um, and I think that's really what, what sits behind the growth that we've seen in, in Bitcoin's price. Okay, separate question. If uh, Maxine Wal uh, uh, Waters called you up and said, I gotta figure out the questions I'm gonna ask uh, Mark Zuckerberg about this new, this, this new currency, you would tell her what? What are your concerns about what, what's going on with Libra? Well, you know, the, the first thing I'd say is I think it's, it's outstanding that uh, we finally have national scale policy attention on crypto. Um, I think this has been an issue that's been on the sidelines from a regulatory perspective. Central bankers, uh, treasury officials, uh, others around the world have been largely dismissive of this for a number of years. But what's very clear now is that cryptocurrency is here to stay. It's going to be massive scale. It's going to play a fundamental role in the transformation of the economic system as we build a digital-based economy. And people got to figure it out. And so what I would be telling Maxine is you need to listen and learn because uh, the technology right now is moving at an incredible pace, not just what is a experimental project in the early nascent stages and a white paper phase from Facebook, but globally, tens of thousands of engineers building things constantly. There's no stopping that. It's growing and continuing to grow. So I would say, really, right now, it's a time for policymakers to learn because this is right. a major breakthrough in the global economy. Jeremy, let me take the other side of the coin on crypto becoming a big thing. If I want to be compliant and I don't want to breach any regulators because I'm a participant in financial services globally, and that is where the majority of money is, the trillions of dollars that trade every day in FX are with compliant managers, I have to be compliant. I have no interest in doing any of this crypto crap because it is not compliant and regulators in all countries do not agree. Isn't the real opportunity here? to build a consortium with maybe two or three currencies in the beginning, like the U.S. dollar, the yen, and maybe the euro and the Swiss franc, get those countries to agree it's going to be compliant. Let's call it the wonder coin, just for the fun of it. And let me trade the wonder coin and pay my taxes with it and be compliant and buy equities and debt with it. But it can also be exchanged back to one of those currencies. That's what's missing here. All of this non-compliant stuff, I don't want to get involved with a drug dealer trading a bitcoin somewhere. I want nothing to do with that. When is this industry going to grow up and get regulated so I can play real well, baseball so that's, there? It's, it's just, it's not accurate. I mean, the, the, I think it's the accrypto, accurate. I don't know the, anybody who puts crypto dollars into, the crypt, crypto into crypto. Industry, the crypto industry has been regulated in the U.S. since 2013. If you want to sit between the banking system and cryptocurrency, you have to be licensed as a financial institution. We've been licensed broadly uh, over that time and in, in the EU. Just recently, you know, the international uh, anti-money laundering uh, standards body sort of defined the licensing that they believe every country in the world needs around this. So that, that's, it's, that's just not accurate. I do think, I however, I totally disagree with you. Idea, if that's true, why can't I issue an ETF with a basket of crypto crap? Why can't I do that? Because the regulator says no way on earth. But because of the volatility. So it doesn't, no, because no, they, the also, they're, 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 they can't see the clearing critical, of every trade. That, so right. I don't buy that at critical all. You can't tell me that crypto. Between, there's critical difference between the sort of digital commodity assets and what are emerging as what are uh, being referred to as stable coins. So just as an example, um, with Coinbase, we launched um, US dollar coin. Uh, we did it through a consortium model. It requires regulated financial institutions to participate in it. It allows you to issue a you know, digital currency version of US dollars. We're going to be rolling that out with support for 
major you know, sovereign reserve currencies. It will allow for their use on the public internet, very, very efficient use of those fiat assets, uh, including you know, very, very efficient payments, settlements, swaps, et cetera. And can it can I pay be used my taxes with block. it? Can I pay my taxes? Um, you, can, you can take a U.S. dollar coin and you can cash it out to any uh, bank account. I have and, to go back uh, to the U.S. dollar that. to pay my taxes. In other words, it's not the good faith well, so of the, the underlying the currency. Fact that, so the fact, I mean, the U.S. Treasury accepts checks and uh, bank wires. And so if, if you want to be able to use one of those. But they don't accept uh, crypto. Settlement methods. They do not accept yeah, I mean, crypto obviously, to pay taxes. Obviously, it's, it's, it's a matter of time before every government in the world accepts crypto as Just a payment Just a matter method. of time. I get it. So that's what I'm asking for. When is the time when I can use this on a compliant basis to pay my taxes in Switzerland or in France or in the United States? Because right now you can't do that. And that's why this is a so, rogue currency. That's the problem with it. Yeah. It is not backed by anybody. It's just talking yeah. a story. That's it. Yeah, I, I, I obviously disagree. I think what we're seeing is... We do disagree. Is, <laughs> we clearly disagree. Um, obviously, what we're seeing is that there is a new infrastructure layer of the Internet. It's not just about currency. It's a fundamental new infrastructure for a very broad range of services, applications, information apps. It's a major architectural shift. Uh, currencies are just an app on top of that. Securities and other types of financial products will be apps on top of that. This is a, uh, a mega trend. It's larger than the web. It will uh, ultimately, uh, I believe, be the foundation of pretty much every major financial transaction, every financial asset that's traded in the world. Jeremy, it's, it's Joe. Respond to the argument of how it can be considered a currency if it's not having a store of value. So um, w w what are we talking about? Are we talking about Bitcoin or, or we're, are we talking we're about talking stable coins? About Bitcoin. Or? Let's go Bitcoin. Let's use Bitcoin. Yeah. So Bitcoin is obviously classified more as a commodity asset. So I, I don't. I, I think that the challenge here is that digital but assets you're that are natively a currency. people call these cryptocurrencies. Most people, right. um, I think, generally call this crypto assets. Um, they sit on a spectrum from currency to commodity to security. Uh, some assets actually have features that are all three. It may have uh, revenue and yield generating features. It may have utility features uh, for someone who's utilizing it in a service or network. And it, it can also be used right. as a payment token that settles instantly. So um, the traditional classification of financial assets that we use today don't work in this environment. So we're seeing financial instruments that uh, right. sort of defy those traditional classifications. Jeremy, we've got to run, but I have one last thing I need to understand. If you're long crypto, who should you be short? Meaning, wouldn't you want to be short MasterCard, Visa, uh, the banks that are capturing these fees? But they're PayPal. in Libra. They are in Libra, <laughs> but I don't know. Yeah. No, but the, well, whatever think, margin they I capture think, in Libra can never be as high as what they're capturing today, right? Sure. Pick, pick your time frame, but uh, I would say over the next five to ten years, the ability to extract margin or fees from moving value around will go to zero, just like the ability to capture value from moving data around or communications around has dropped to zero. So that's dropping to zero, so the ability uh, to extract those fees. So that affects, obviously, banks, payment schemes, others. I also think, ultimately, this leads to the rendering of a very broad range of financial services on top of this, which will be highly, highly competitive to right. both retail and okay. institutional banking.